Hi guys, um, hope you're all well. It's Adam Steele from the Hot Pole Studios here. Uh, if you've seen any of the things we've been talking about with this upcoming documentary that we're doing about British audio, you'll have heard that we've been doing interviews with companies around the country. So one that we've done is, this is an interview with Zilla, Zilla Cabs. Uh, this is Paul Goff. Uh, Paul is, in my opinion, an absolute brilliant man, genius, and he's someone who I'm a big fan of at this point, that we've got four Zilla cabs in the studio, we're probably going to get more, and I'll be doing a review of one of his uh, bass cabs soon because it's not something they do as much of, but it's something that I believe they do very well. So it's something that's worth having a look at if you're interested in Zilla but you're a bass player. So in the meantime, um, before the documentary is released, um, I'll give you a, a short kind of five-ish minute section now of the interview that we did in their factory. So, enjoy. Hi, I'm Paul from Zilla Camps. Great. So, let's just do a brief, from the start of uh, how you got into making cabs and when you started Zilla and how that went on. Okay, um, it started um, around 2000, well, the, the company started in 2006. I'd spent a few years before that um, building what I didn't realise at the time were prototypes. Essentially, I I come from a science background. I'm a, I was a musician, working as a musician, and um, always had a uh, an interest in carpentry. So the three kind of came together. Um, at the time, I thought there was going to be a lot of science involved. I thought my background's um, down the mathematics route, so uh, and applying the mathematics. Um, so I thought I was going to come up with the equations and use what existed, modify them, um, apply them to, to how guitar sounds, different amps, different woods and stuff. And then you realize how little music has to do with science. And actually it's to do with your ears and your, your experience, uh, experience with the woods, making them, that kind of stuff. So was there a particular point when you thought, like, I can do this full time in not anything else, just do solely? Yeah, there was, but it came a surprisingly long way down the line. Um, when, I, when I started it, um, I think it was quite a sensible approach, actually. But we, we were selling things as well, like speakers and Tolex and stuff like that, because it was quite hard to get over here. Um, and that helped that basically well effectively that helped to keep the the business afloat um it's quite an expensive game to to start off in and when you're doing it small you're really getting hammered for for quantity plus when you're small and no one knows about you you want to try and on not undercut everyone but you want to try and have a um uh, a certain price point the band i was in was slowing down um, guys I'd worked with with the cabs sort of bands and stuff their profiles were flying up and it just it was really quite natural it's really within months um, I kind of thought hang on a minute you know the um, yeah, yeah you start to use a lot more black ink than red ink I think is how I'd like to think of it at the start of 2011 and then you, you kind of think, yeah, this is, you know, people are, you start to read more things and, you know, people are more interested. So that, that's when I thought, you know, time to give this a really good. Anyone who's ever worked in business knows that your biggest overhead, apart from you buying your parts, is staff. Yeah. So do you think staying small, even at, at this point, has helped you to keep going rather than trying to overreach? Um, well, I've, because of how the business started, uh, I've never really talked about this much before, but because where the business started is such a low, not a low point, I mean, in, in a bad way, I mean, as in not selling much. Um, it did start in a, it started at a time when people were getting more receptive, but everyone at the time, and before that, you just bought the matching cab or you used your old cab. That's what you didn't go to someone. You didn't. Oh, maybe you had a um, 
you bought a Mesa Boogie head, but you couldn't afford the cab, so you bought a Marshall, right? That's, that's kind of how it went. Um, so times were harder back then. But they, um, the overhead, I'd, I'd always got, um, I keep on top of things with the, with the finances of the business. It's kind of, I'm good with, I am good with numbers, so, um, and I like to know exactly um, where it is. I mean, we have financial advice and there's accountants and stuff um, to make sure everything's, you know, right and legal and, and all that. But they, I do like to know exactly where the business is. So I had made it where that wasn't such a big leap. I'd, looking back now, I think, why didn't I do that three years ago? It could have. But because um, of how it's grown, it's been quite, um, it's quite natural, quite organic, the growth of the business. I, and I have been really holding it back for the last three or four years, making sure that um, we didn't grow, you know, too fast. The, the growth in the, the growth has been like 30% a year for the last five, six years. Uh, it could have been more, but my biggest thing is making sure the quality is there. What does the future hold for Zilla? As far as you are aware? Quite a bit, actually, I think. It got to the point where I'm really quite... I've always believed in what I've been doing, and now I believe in what we're doing. And I've been having some really interesting conversations and um yeah i think we've both got the confidence now to take things a, a little bit faster and a few more steps keeping the quality there though that's 100 percent the the thing i don't care if we get smaller if the quality is there quality has to be there um but yeah i think there's a there's a fair bit um most of which i'm not going to say but the states is a big one for me they're really uh, being kind to us. So um, I think it's time to to give that one a bit of a kick up the ass and, uh, <laughs> and start doing more there. But yeah, it's, um, um, I think more people need zealous. More people need insp <laughs> some inspiration. No, they, uh, more, more people need, need these cows. And I'm sure they will have this. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that little short piece there from Paul from Zilla. Um, so the documentary is going to be coming out in a while. I'm not entirely sure when because we've got more to film. We've got to do all the get get you know video lock and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then when that's done, we'll be releasing the entire Zilla document uh, Zilla interview, and there are more to come. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll be releasing a short piece from Sontronics from Trevor Coley and from Ken Weller from Celestia. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.